on today's show, Nissan teases headlight porn ahead of the unveiling of the upcoming next generation Nissan Leaf. An Israeli firm demonstrates an ultra fast charging EV battery. And the world's fastest car around the Nürburgring in Germany is now electric. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's brand new Ecotech Roundup Show, brought to you by New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. 100% Kiwi and 49% community owned, we're serious about clean, green, renewable energy. Have you switched? Head to ecotricity.co.nz to join today. Hi there, I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, a professional musician turned electric vehicle crusader, and I'm here to bring Kiwis a weekly roundup of the biggest news stories around the world in relation to cleaner, greener transport. As always, thanks for joining me. Fast approaching its seventh full year of production, the Nissan Leaf electric car is starting to look seriously outdated and underpowered when compared to the latest generation of new electric cars coming to market. And as those of you who watch the show regularly will know, Nissan is currently working at readying its replacement, the 2018 Nissan Leaf, for an official market launch this autumn. So far, we've seen very little, save for the occasional spy shots, but this week, Nissan finally released its first official teaser photo for the next-gen plug-in car. Yes, this is all you're getting. A close-up of the 2018 Leaf's headlights. Similar in form to the lights we've seen on some of the spy shots of the prototype Leaf's undergoing testing, it reiterates the fact that Nissan is looking for a more mainstream appearance and appeal for its next-generation car. Of course, it's not known if the vehicle will ever officially make it to New Zealand, especially given how Nissan pulled out of the Kiwi market with the previous Leaf. But hey, we can live in hope, right? And even if it doesn't come here officially, there's still those JDM imports to get excited about, right? For years, the diesel engine has formed an important part of Volvo's engine lineup, especially in Europe, where it's been traditionally favored over petrol engines thanks to its higher gas mileage and low end torque. But this week, Volvo confirmed that, thanks to the success of Tesla, its current generation of diesel engines would be its last. In its place, Volvo will shift all of its developmental attention to its new modular electrification platform, or MEP for short, allowing it to transition to killing the diesel engine completely by 2023 and hitting a total of 1 million electrified Volvo cars on the road by 2025. Like other automakers, though, Volvo has some catching up to do if it really well and truly wants that transition to happen. So watch this space to see if it succeeds or not. When it comes to transforming the way we travel in the future, Elon Musk has a fair bit of skin in the game as CEO of Tesla and SpaceX, not to mention the person widely credited for making the weird thing that traveling at supersonic speeds in an enclosed tubes was a really good idea. And of course, we mustn't forget about the boring company, Musk's latest transportation venture that seeks to ease congestion in major cities by transporting cars underground at speeds in excess of 125 miles per hour. 200 kph. Well, this week, following the release of a CGI rendering at the start of May of what it might be like to travel using a boring company tunnel, Musk published a short Instagram video showing the first prototype vehicle sled making its way along a scale tunnel that's being used for both Hyperloop and boring company test vehicles. Accelerating to the cradle's top speed quickly and safely, the video shows that the boring company is certainly more than just an idea. But there's no telling as to when we'll see the first commercial application of this technology. While most electric car drivers will tell you that current rapid charging technology, be it Chademo, CCS, or Tesla's supercharger standard, is fast enough to refuel their cars on a long trip, since the car is often full before they are, many who don't yet own an electric car view charging speed as a major hurdle to overcome before they'll even consider trading in their petrol car. Well, this week, Israeli firm Stordot held a live demonstration at the Cube Tech Fair in Berlin of its patented battery technology, which makes use of a proprietary organic compound to make it possible for battery cells to charge at unimaginable rates. How fast is fast? Well, Stordot says the technology can recharge a 300-mile battery pack to full in five minutes, which blows every other battery tech out of the water. The issue? It's not production ready yet, and the live demonstration given only shows the battery charging from empty to 60% before ending, something that took about three minutes, while the cell temperature visibly rose. 
Now, I'm not saying it's not possible. Store.dot does have plenty of investors, but going from laboratory to production is a tough transition for any tech company. So let's hope this one is successful. It's no secret that Toyota has little interest in electric cars, killing the production of not one but two generations of Rav4 EVs, and doing everything it can in recent years to derail the progress of plug-in cars in preference to promoting hydrogen fuel cell and hybrid vehicle technology instead. In recent months, that's lessened a little as Toyota has come to terms with the fact that some electric vehicles will exist in its lineup of the future. But this week, an automotive news interview with Toyota CEO Akito Toyota made it clear that he really doesn't feel electric cars can cut the mustard. After being presented with an all-electric Toyota 86 sports car, Toyota seemed pretty nonplussed, noting that they'll cost more money to produce and may lack driving excitement. Of course, we're talking about the same guy who had a bromance with Tesla CEO Elon Musk way back when Toyota invested in the California company in exchange for help with its second-generation Toyota Rav4 EV. So I'm honestly not sure quite what went wrong. Oh well, Toyota's fate lies in its own business plan, and only time will tell if its plan is correct or not. Usually, when a new car launches, you'll see it pitted against its rivals in a to-the-death shootout. But this week, we learned about the Straight Pipes' recent road trip video, in which two cars going head to head were both Hyundai Ionics. But one was the electric model, and the other the hybrid. Following a 1,000k trip from Toronto to Ottawa in Canada, the hybrid Ionic wins when it comes to overall range. But the reviewers quickly decide that the Ionic EV is the better car, despite its limited range. Gaining praise was the user-adjustable regenerative braking and the sport mode. It's a fun, honest review that isn't the usual YouTube hatchet job, so you should certainly check it out after this show is finished. I'll admit that airplane travel and electric cars might not feel like they go hand in hand, but at the tail end of last week, a new scheme being opened up in Auckland, Wellington, and Christchurch changed that by offering regular day trip business flyers the chance to rent a Volkswagen E Golf for free while they're off on business. Europe Car and Volkswagen New Zealand have teamed up for the program called Electric Day Pass, and the program will run for a total of 12 months with the idea of helping encourage businesses to think more about sustainable motoring, their own personal carbon footprint, and perhaps even encourage business people to buy their own electric car. Neat. Ford hasn't been all that committed to date on electric vehicles, but said Ford CTO Raj Nair this week that will change when it launches a brand new ground-up electric car that manages 480 k's of range per charge and won't break the bank either. Talking with Business Insider this week, Nair said that Ford's first mass market from the ground up electric car, a plug-in CUV, will be fully competitive in the electric vehicle and mainstream vehicle marketplaces. Adding that needs are for it to make sure that it hits its affordability targets; otherwise, electric vehicles will stay as niche or pure luxury vehicles. Ford is certainly talking the talk, but given its lackluster interest in electric cars to date, including the Ford Focus EV, I've yet to be convinced. How about you? When it comes to improving the range of an electric car, adding a larger, more energy-dense battery pack has kind of been the go-to solution thus far, along with a faster, more powerful charging system designed to pump as much energy back into the battery pack as possible without damaging the car's batteries. But in recent years, we've seen another solution come into view. Dynamic wireless charging, a system where you can wirelessly recharge your car's battery pack by driving along a special lane of the highway. So far, this vision has remained the preserve of laboratories, but this week we saw a real-life demonstration courtesy of a partnership between Renault and Qualcomm, in which a specially prepared Renault Kangoo ZE demonstrated that 20 kilowatt wireless inductive charging is possible while driving down a 100 meter test track. Fitted with the other half of the system, while the power transfer level isn't DC quick charging power levels yet, it does set the groundwork for a future system where power could be transferred at a higher rate, powering the car and recharging its battery pack at the same time. And finally, open to the public, the Nurburgring Nordschleife in Germany, known as the Green Hell by locals, is one of the most demanding race courses in the world. 
and has become the standard go-to track for automakers keen to prove that high-performance cars have what it takes to set the fastest possible time on the 12.9 mile course. Well, this week we heard that the EP9, the one megawatt limited production electric sports car from Chinese electric car startup NIO, set a new lap record of 6 minutes and 45.9 seconds. That record not only makes it the fastest electric car on the course, but the fastest car period, beating gasoline cars like the Radical SR8 LM, Lamborghini Huracan Performante, and the Porsche 918 Spyder. Well done to those involved, and here's to further record setting on that iconic racetrack. And on that happy note, it's time for me to say goodbye for the week. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show, and if you've got some feedback, be sure to send it our way. As always, I'll be back next no, week dear, with another no, you, show. You won't be here next <laughs> week, dear. No, dear. No. Yes. No. Apparently, I, I won't be back next week. You, you're helping me with a convention, remember, dear? Queenie, a no, convention, uh, yes. Yes, I, I remember. Uh, convention, yes. Okay, so I'm not going to be here next week, but I need to say goodbye to, to well, this show. Well, get on with it then. Yes, I was about Ooh. to get on with it. As I've been reminded, hey, there's uh, not- Hey, don't forget about me. Hey, mom. <laughs> no, <Bye>. I've <laughs> not forgotten about yeah. you either, Chimmy. Oh, okay. Anyway, uh -huh. yes, I'm off next week having fun with these two. So you'll see me in two weeks time. Enjoy your weekend, make sure you do something fun and help keep those wind turbines spinning by switching to New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. And until next time, yeah. have a good Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah.